Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Warbird pilot caps off 500 hours of B-29 PIC time. Lakeland Linder approves concessions at airport. New docu-series Chopper Cops profiles airborne law enforcement. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Holland Lee. Let's get into today's stories. Warbird pilot caps off 500 hours of B-29 PIC time. The Warbird community celebrated Mark Novak, chief pilot of their B-29 dock, and his accomplishment of racking up 500 hours in the vintage bomber. On top of that, Novak built up more than 300 hours of time flying the other B-29 Fifi, making him the modern era's most experienced B-29 pilot. In celebrating the milestone, the details surrounding how one goes about becoming the world's foremost captain of a nearly extinct type certificate unsurprisingly starts with who you know, like any cool piloting job. Novak recalled, quote, in 2011, a good friend of mine, David Oliver, said that Fifi was returning to fly it after a three-year re-engine project and needed pilots. I had attended Fifi ground school 15 years earlier and knew that volunteering on the B-29 would be a dream come true. I was retired from the Air Force and serving on the flight crew was exactly what I needed. That was 13 years ago and I'm so glad I said yes." End quote. Novak had finished up his USAF time in the B-1 and KC-135 after over 27 years there. He began cutting his teeth on Fifi, acting as PIC and IP for the aircraft over a five-year span, all the while watching Doc's airframe slowly shake off its slumber. And after the break, Midnight eVTOL certification criteria finalized. Hello, pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Midnight eVTOL certification criteria finalized. Archer Aviation has finalized the criteria for final airworthiness certification of the Midnight aircraft. The Midnight eVTOL has been given an updated final set of airworthiness criteria by the FAA, which is a quote, significant regulatory milestone, end quote, but still a ways off from production. Archer does note that it's one of, quote, only two companies in the world to achieve this progress with the FAA, end quote. Now, finalized criteria allows Archer to work with the FAA and obtain final approvals on its certification and testing plans. Recent Falcon 9 launch breaks delivery records. SpaceX has really been driving home the concept of reusability for its Falcon series, with its recent Starlink mission accounting for its 21st launch. It's a testament to the level of engineering and dedication they had to bring to the table, not to mention the attractive cost savings that come with reusing expensive space assets. That particular Falcon 9 was Booster 1062, which managed to deliver 23 more V2 mini Starlink satellites into orbit. Even its turnaround has improved, since Booster 1062 had only returned to Earth after its previous mission 35 days beforehand. EASA OKs ProLine Fusion Retrofits on Cessna Citation CJs. 
Cessna Citation CJ-1 Plus and 2 Plus aircraft registered in Europe can now be upgraded with ProLine Fusion Avionics systems after receiving certification approval from EASA. Nathan Voigt, VP and General Manager of Business and Regional Avionics at Collins Aerospace, said, quote, clearing this certification hurdle is a major step forward in providing European CJ customers with a solution that not only enhances their aircraft operations, but can also extend the life and functionality of an aircraft, end quote. Europa Clipper makes cross-country flight to Florida. Assembled at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California, the spacecraft arrived at the agency's Kennedy Space Center in Florida on May 23rd for launch preparations. NASA's Europa Clipper, a spacecraft designed to investigate Jupiter's icy moon Europa and its potential to support life, arrived in Florida on May 23rd. The spacecraft, assembled at NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab in Southern California, landed aboard an Air Force C-17 Globemaster III aircraft at the launch and landing facility at NASA's Kennedy Space Center. That's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Lakeland Linder approves concessions at airport. The Airspace Center for Excellence has been given the blessing to begin operating Lakeland Linder International Airport's first concession store, riding on the tail of new commercial services by Avello Airlines. Evidently, there weren't too many bidders for the opportunity, with most in the area eschewing what they believed is a non-starter. The approving body came by way of Lakeland commissioners, who voted unanimously to approve the center's lease agreement. Airport director Chris Hallstrand admitted that despite their best efforts, nobody really wanted in, aside from ACE. Quote, we talked to folks in the local community, national, international, that are in this business in Tampa and local coffee shops. Nobody was interested, especially the first year. This is a very high-risk, low-reward opportunity for somebody, end quote. As it happens, the Airspace Center for Excellence sort of stumbled into the gig. Hallstrand had mentioned their desire to open some kind of concessions now that the airport has Avello flights coming with twice-weekly service on Thursdays and Sundays. As she shopped for vending machines, which are just about the least welcoming and exciting culinary options imaginable, she mentioned the problem to Jean Conrad, head of ACE and once airport director of Lakeland Linder, and the ACE agreement unfolded. After these messages, new docuseries Chomper Cops profiles airborne law enforcement. I'm currently using the Hartzell Talon, by far the best aerobatic propeller ever come out. I use the Trailblazer. It adds performance to the Super Decathlon and dependability, and it's rugged. Hartzell's been an excellent partner for Whip Air, just in terms of your product support, as well as keeping an eye on the market and developing new products that meet demand. It's helping us all have better performing airplanes. It's such a proud honor to fly behind that propeller. For over 30 years, the Massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new Digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, and even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon. www.sportplane.com Welcome back. New docuseries Chomper Cops profiles airborne law enforcement. If you've been looking for exciting aviation-oriented programming, a new reality series may just do the trick. Paramount Plus has announced the June launch of Chopper Cops, a new docuseries that takes viewers into the cockpit of an elite Florida police team of helicopter pilots. They're just north of Disney World, but to the men and women of the Marion County Sheriff's Department, the 1,600-square-mile area they patrol is no theme park. Marion County deals with crime scenes amounting to more than 7,000 felonies a year, but with a jurisdiction larger than the state of Rhode Island, ground units find it impossible to have eyes everywhere. Enter the need for airborne capabilities. With 10 half-hour episodes, Chopper Cops showcases Marion County Sheriff's Department with state-of-the-art helicopters manned by elite police pilots. Known as Air One, these Chopper Cops, who operate 24 hours a day and 7 days a week, are equipped with infrared cameras and augmented reality mapping capabilities that allow police on the ground to see in the dark and locate suspects. As Sheriff Billy Woods' quote, eye in the sky, they detect where perpetrators are running and hiding and whether they're armed. 
They essentially guide the SWAT team with vital, instantaneous information. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.